All right, Monahu, Marjorie Stabon, Rocka Mai Culture Dance Group, and we're here to do a presentation as an honoring for you, as a gift uh, for you coming to our lands, and we want to welcome you in a good way. Okay, so we're going to start off and do a, a Paiute song and dance for you. guest in the Owens Valley this week, the former Miss Indian World, 2011-2012, Marjorie Tavon. Yes, she's here with us. We just did a cultural presentation, virtual cultural exchange, offering her some song and dance, and so now here we are, going to talk with her and get to know her a little better, so I'm going to let her introduce herself formally. Hello, uh, my Inupiaq name is Kuna. I hail from the little town of Nome, Alaska. Yes, that is where the fourth kind was filmed. And yes, that is where Barry C. Gold is also filmed. And uh, I am from Alaska. I am Inupiaq and I'm part Kiowa as well. And um, I'm happy to be here in California in this lovely 105 degree weather. And uh, I am very excited to to share a little bit of our traditional games and our indigenous games here. What do you do for fun when you're like snowed in? Well, when I'm snowed in, it's different um, because you have different things that happen. So like, first of all, it's hard to get snowed in because when you get 12 foot drifts, it's like, yeah, let's play out. And you know, we don't really kind of, we kind of embrace the weather, I guess you could say. And we don't necessarily get snowed in. But when it's negative 60 degrees out and you're, and you're making sure that you're not going to freeze to death. Uh, I like to stay home and probably put on some Netflix, watch some movies. But I, I am, I do like to, I do like to play the games a lot though in my free time. And and traditionally, we always played it, our played the games during the winter, and, and we always told stories. So I like to try and do that too, and incorporate my culture into my lazy days when you're stuck inside at negative 60 below. So, um, do you still keep in touch with your former Miss Indian World contestants? Yeah, I keep in touch with as much as I can, but um, the um, ones that I keep in touch with are the ones that are from the northern region, so who are from Canada. I, I seem to take to keep in touch with them a little bit more than the ones that were from north, the southern side of the U.S. And so you always create the sisterhood bond with uh, the girls when you compete for Miss Indian World. So I do anticipate you running for Miss Indian World someday, right? And Aurora, you probably run for Miss Indian World someday. Yeah, <laughs> all right, good. And, and Sage? No, I'm sorry. Mr. Henry. Mr. Henry. the last Pike Prince of Owens Valley. <laughs> what do you think of this valley since you've been here in the last couple days now? Well, this is the first of, like, long day. But other than the 105 degrees heat, uh, it's beautiful. And I live in a valley nine months out of the year in Fairbanks because I go to school there. And uh, we suffer from, just like you guys, extreme heat and extreme cold. 
So in the summer it gets up to 90, in the winter it gets below 60. So it's pretty, pretty extreme, just like you guys. You guys adapt well. It's pretty wonderful to be here, and the, the nights are beautiful. All right, so I got another question. Um, aside from Miss Indian World, what do you do at home? Back, back home, it's kind of difficult because I'm a, I'm a student, so I, I, I go to school, to college, I'm a senior, I'm getting a degree in Alaska Native Studies and minoring in my Inupiaq language. And um, so I go to school full time. And I did that when I was Miss Indian World too. And then I go back home to Nome and I'm a fisheries technician. So I, I stay outside, which is the best time. You go outside, you count fish, and you go and catch fish, and you do all the subsistence things. It's really important to, for me to be able to participate in my subsistence culture, so. So a question from one of the audience members out here was, she wants to know about the health issues up there because of the diet. Is it different, or do they still have diabetes like we do down here, which is very prevalent? So like you guys, we had an extremely healthy diet before any type of um, contact with Western people. We were, and we consider it the healthiest diet in the world. I mean, it's all natural. You know, seal oil is very good for you, very good for your body, the greens that come from the ground, the fish that comes from the sea, and we are extremely healthy. But once the Westerners came in, they brought all these things that were very unhealthy for us, you know, sugar, lots of this processed fat, and these things that our body wasn't used to digesting. And so it's a very common thing to see obese natives, and it's very common for them to have diabetes and things like that. And so yeah, we have a huge problem with diabetes. For And one example is um, we kind of switched one of our traditional foods and we've kind of um, alternated instead of using traditional, like for example, bear fat or caribou fat, they use Crisco. And uh, Crisco is a very processed fat, it's very bad for you, it's a very bad type of fat, and they use that for our Eskimo ice cream. And we have, we make Eskimo ice cream, as, I make it traditionally, I still make it with um, reindeer fat and I use seal oil and water, but they use Crisco instead. And because of that, um, they eat it so often that it kind of creates a problem with their heart and it, it makes them become diabetic in that way. So, but in a way it's traditional to them because they substituted out the traditional thing. So um, that's a problem for us. Suicide is really heavy in Native American country throughout and more so in Alaska. Um, could you elaborate on how that is in your community or what kind of issues you're dealing with? Yeah, we, we have a lot of suicide in, uh, within our own region, my own region, and that's in the Norton Sound region, which is northwest of Alaska. But uh, I'll talk about my tribe as a whole, Inuit, and that's all the people that uh, have, that inhabit all of the, the regions of the circumpolar north. And um, so we have a lot of issues with suicide, and we also have a lot of awareness towards it as well. We're starting to do a lot of suicide prevention programs, which is being um, very helpful. Um, starting to let people talk about it more because um, I uh, experienced that the the parents and the grandparents that were affected by all of the boarding schools, residential schools, seem to be more isolated and keep things to themselves a lot more. And I think. That's where the whole thing where you don't talk about things anymore, you don't talk about your problems, and so people just don't know what to do with all of that that um, emotion that's in their brain, and they don't know what to do, and so, you know, they always think, oh, might as well just, why am I still alive, kind of thing. And I think nowadays now, what our suicide prevention program is doing is to encourage people to talk about it, and encourage people to just say something, and then be there for someone who who they think may have any issues towards that type of, or have that type of thinking about suicide. And so we have it, um, and you know, nationally we're the highest. Um, it's definitely at its, um, it's at a decline, which is great, um, but it's more than I could say about other Inuit communities in, within Canada and Greenland and Russia. Um, they're still suffering greatly from suicide and things like that. So, but I think it's really important to, to talk and do prevention, um, it seems to be helping. She came here to demonstrate some skills. So what we're gonna do now is have her have us demonstrate some of these skills. All of these games are created to build your strength for survival.
So you may not normally use these muscles in everyday life, but when you hunt and when you gather and you fish, you may use them. And so that's why these games are so kind of awkward and unique in their own ways. What I'm gonna teach you guys or have you guys try and do is the one foot high kick. And the one foot high kick is a signal game and so I taught Sage earlier how to do it, and I really hope he could do it. Let's see if he actually listened. I <laughs> had a joke. Okay, one foot high kick. Oh, real good. Holy cow. Let's go a little higher. Let's see what he could do. Right there. Yep, remember, you gotta maintain your balance every time. It's important to maintain balance because it shows control of your body. I think you could do it. Yeah! Way to go! Bobby? Yeah! I don't know if your clothes allow you to do that. I don't think my knees are allowed to do that. In the, <laughs> in the competitions, you have three attempts. <laughs> Whoa! There we go. And that's how you do it. I think I might have to put my shorts on and show these guys what yeah. to do. <laughs> The Eskimo stick pull is designed to build your muscles um, in your arms, in your back, and your legs because traditionally we would hunt seals in the ice and we'd have to harpoon them and put the spear or harpoon and we'd have to pull the seals out of the ice and the seals can be very heavy. Well, sit down like that if you can. You're, not, you're 27! Okay, yep. And you'll bend your knees just a little bit, just for uh, safety reasons. We don't want to hurt you. And Sage will get an inside grip, and Bobby will get an outside grip. And when I say pull, you guys pull, and whoever can pull the stick out of the other person's hand is the winner. All right, ready, set, pull. Straight back, nice, good pull. <laughs> All right, three switch grips. Sage has the outside grip now, Bobby has the inside. All right, on your mark, get set, pull. All right, Sage is the better seal hunter. How much time we got? Oh, 15 minutes. All right, the ear pull. The ear pull is designed to build your pain threshold on frostbite. Okay, ready, set, pull. Oh! <laughs> okay, switch ears. Ready, set, pull! <laughs> okay, so what you're gonna do is you're gonna sit in the same position. You're gonna grab the foot of the straight, yep. And when I say pull, you guys will pull straight back. Whoever can pull back, the other person wins. Yep, there you go. On your mark, get set, pull! on that one, and then you'll switch so positions on your mark. Get set. Pull. There we go. Sage got it. Sage. So now we're going to have Marjorie try something. Ruben Littlehead is a professional at this attempting right now. We'll see if Marjorie will be able to. Okay. All right, here she goes with the first attempt. Two, two, three. Yeah! First attempt! Woo! <laughs> Dang! Right off the bat! That's the record, eh? Here we, he did seven. He did seven. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine! <laughs> oh, boy! Miss Indian World! Ruben? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, many thanks to Marjorie again. Thank you for being here with us. We're glad that you took the time to do this interview with us and sharing with the people out there. And again, we're the Akamai Culture Dance Group. And thank you for sharing with us and letting us take part in everything you're doing. Yes, yeah, so. so thank you. Thank you. Whoa! Five, five.